Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem insertion sort list. We're given the head of a singly linked list and we want to sort the list using the algorithm insertion sort, which you might have learned about in your algorithms class at college. It's a pretty simple sorting algorithm. And I'll basically summarize the steps that they've written out over here. Basically, let's assume we were given an array actually. So let's suppose that we had an array that looks like this because insertion sort is usually done on arrays, but in this case, we're actually gonna be doing this on a linked list, but let's see how it's gonna be different. And first, let's just understand the algorithm itself. So the idea is to first sort, you know, just the first value, then have the first two values sorted, then have the first three values sorted, and then have the entire thing sorted. And the way that's done is for each value, we're going to be inserting it into the sorted portion of the list, inserting it such that it's in order so that the sorted portion stays sorted. So when we look at the first value though, you know, this is the entire list itself. So it's already technically sorted, right? So we don't really do anything after looking at the first value, but then we look at the second value. So, so far, this is our sorted portion of the list, and now we're looking at a new value. So our goal here is to determine where is this going to be inserted such that it's that these two values are in sorted order. There's only one spot it could be inserted in, right? It could only be inserted here. And the question is, should these be should these two values stay like this or should they be swapped? And in this case, of course, one is smaller than two. So we're going to swap these two values. So we're going to have a one here and then a two over here. Next, we're going to look at the third value, four, and then determine where should it be inserted. Well, these three are already in sorted order, right? We know that because four is greater than two. We know that these are already sorted and four is greater than two. So therefore these three are already sorted, right? We don't have to do anything. So next we look at the last value three and we know that these three are in sorted order. But now uh, when we see three and look at four, we know three is smaller than four. So it can be swapped with four. For all we know, there could be another four over here, right? This could have been a four. So the question is, how do we know that three is going to be inserted here rather than over here? Well, that's why we're going to keep iterating through the array going in this direction, right? We're going to see, okay, it's smaller than four. That, then we should look over here. Well, it's greater than two. So therefore it's going to go in between these two. So we can swap it with this value over here. And uh, once we do that, three will be here, four will be here. So insertion sort is not always a super efficient algorithm, which, you know, you can tell that if, uh, to find the spot to insert three into, in the worst case, we would have to look at every single value in the array to the left of it. So if we have to do that for every single value in the input array, the overall time complexity is going to be big O of n squared. That's the worst case time complexity, but the best case time complexity is actually big O of n n. Let me tell you why. Suppose we already had an array that looks uh, like this, that it was already sorted. You'd look at one, it stays the same. You'd look at two, well, it's larger than one, so it stays the same. Look at three, well, it's larger than two, so this stays the same. Look at four, it's larger than three, it stays the same as well. So we didn't even have to do anything other than iterating through the array. That's why it was big O of n time complexity. So let's try to create an insertion sort algorithm on linked lists that you know preserves the, wor the worst case time complexity being n squared and the best case being big O of n. So the algorithm is most going to be similar actually with a linked list but there's just a couple things the first thing is there's going to be some pointer manipulation of course in this case though it's not going to be too difficult but one thing I want to tell you though is uh, you know suppose we were taking this and you know maybe inserting it in between two nodes okay that's going to be an operation where you know we're inserting a node in between two nodes but there also might be operations where we take this one and then insert it over here, meaning that it's not going to be inserted between nodes, but it's going to be at the beginning of the linked list. That's going to be a different operation than in between two nodes. Plus, that means uh, the head of our linked list is going to be changing from this one over to this one. So that's just a bunch of edge cases that we'd rather not deal with. And you can prevent those by basically creating a dummy node. I'm running out of space on the left side, but uh, suppose we had some node that's actually 
the head of our list, but it's a fake head. Basically, what this allows us to do is remove those edge cases. So if we wanted to take this node, put it over here, it would be the same as inserting it as uh, in between two nodes, right? It would be the same as taking this node and putting it over here. So that removes the edge cases. Also, the head of our linked list wouldn't change, right? It would always be this node, but when we're actually going to return the result itself, we could just take this node and take the next uh, node after it and then just uh, return that portion of the linked list. This is just about removing edge cases. Okay, but the next thing, when we were talking about insertion sort, we were looking at each value and then figuring out where to insert it by going to the left, right? Because that allows us to make sure that this algorithm uh, in the best case would be O of n time because maybe the input is already sorted. But with linked lists, especially singly linked lists, we can't go backwards. We always have to start at the beginning each time. And while that's true, one check we can still make before we even start iterating through is just to make sure that, uh, you know, maybe this node, if it's already greater than the previous node, greater than or equal to the previous node's value, then it's probably already in the correct position. Because remember, we're going to always assume that this portion is sorted, and then we're going to look at the next value after that. So if this is greater than this one, then that means all of them are sorted. So that's just a thing that will allow us to keep this uh, in the best case would be n times uh, complexity, but in the worst case, it'll still be n squared. Okay, now for the actual algorithm, it's going to be pretty simple. The first node we're always going to skip because it's already in sorted order. But then when we look at the next one, we're going to first check, is this greater than two? Nope, it's not. So then we're going to start iterating from the beginning of the linked list and then check, okay, is one smaller than two? Because if it's smaller than two, that means we can insert it right over here. And in this case, it is smaller. So we're going to insert it over there. But to do that, we're going to have to do a bunch of pointer manipulation. So this is the node we're at. We're going to take the previous node and take its pointer and then actually set it to be the next node after that. So that kind of hints that we're going to keep track of a current pointer, but we're also going to keep track of a previous pointer because it's going to come in handy for us. Also, as we're iterating through the uh, starting from the beginning of the linked list to figure out where to insert the new node into, uh, you know, let's say we found that this is the target node that we're going to insert the node before this one. So we're going to need a pointer to this node and a pointer to the node that came before it, because this is what we're going to do now. Basically, we're going to move this node over here and cross it out here. But you can see that it was uh, previously its next pointer was pointing at this node, but now we want its next pointer to be pointing at this one. So that's another thing that we're going to do. And for this node, instead of pointing at this uh, two, we're going to now set it to be uh, pointing at one. So it's kind of hard to see, but this is kind of what our uh, linked list looks like now. Sorry that this is a little bit hard to see, but let's just scribble out some of this stuff. Okay, and now we get to the next node, which is four. And then we would look at the previous node to check to make sure that four is greater than the previous node before we even start uh, iterating from the beginning of the linked list. And in this case, four is greater than two, so we don't have to do anything here. Four can stay the same. Then we would go to the next node, three, look at four. Is three greater than four? It's not. So then we do have to uh, take three, start at the beginning of the linked list, and then figure out where to insert it. We would check that one, uh, three is greater than one, two, three is also greater than two, then we'd get to four. Nope, three is not greater than four, it's less than four. So we would insert three right before this four. So we can kind of scribble it out here. We would update fours next pointer to be pointing at the next pointer of this one, which was uh, previously pointing at null. So that's where this would go, point at null, and then three would be inserted in between this node and this node, just like we did previously. If I try to draw it out, I think I'm just going to, you know, destroy this drawing. So I'm not going to do that. But you can kind of see how the pointer manipulation is working out in this case. If you know how to insert a node in between two nodes, you probably know how to do this problem. Again, worst case time complexity is big O of n squared. We're not really using any extra space. We're just manipulating the pointer. So the space complexity is big O of one. So now let's code it up. Okay, so now let's code it up. And the first thing we're going to do is just create our dummy node that I was talking about. And this is just to handle some edge cases for us. Uh, the first, uh, as you can see up above the constructor, the first parameter is just the value. We don't really care about the value. But the next node 
is going to be the real head of our linked list. So that's what we're going to pass in as the second parameter. And we're going to be keeping track of two pointers. Uh, you could probably do this with one, but just to keep things a little bit cleaner, I'm actually just going to use two uh, previous and current. Current is going to start at the second node head.next because the first node we can just skip pretty much. We're going to want to check every single uh, node in the list starting from cur until we reach the end of the linked list. So while current is not null. And remember the first thing we're going to check is maybe it's already in order. Maybe uh, current.val is already greater than or equal to previous.val in which case we could just continue to the next iteration of the loop. But don't forget before we continue we do want to still update the previous and current pointers. So previous would be set to current and current would be set to current.next. We can do that in one line with Python. If that's not the case though, we want to start from the beginning of the linked list. So temp, we'll just call that our pointer. Uh, it's probably not a great name, but it's going to start at the head of our linked list and we're going to keep iterating. This temp variable is basically to tell us what position should we insert the current node into because it's not already in sorted order. So, so what we're going to check is have we reached a point where current.val is less than temp.next.val. And we're going to keep going while this is not the case. So while uh, current.val is actually greater than temp.next, that basically means that we need to continue to advance our temp pointer to temp.next to continue to find a spot where that we can actually insert this current node into. Remember, it's going to go after the temp pointer and it's going to go before the temp.next pointer. So that's why we're using temp.next here. So once that loop has stopped, we have found a spot to insert the temp node into. So what we can do is take our previous dot next, which is currently pointing at cur, but set it to be cur dot next. So that's one pointer we had to update. Now we actually have to take current and insert it in between those two. So what we're going to do is say current dot uh, next is going to be temp dot next. And the order I'm doing this in does matter because after we do that, we're going to say, okay, temp dot next now is going to equal cur. With these two lines, I'm basically inserting the current in between the temp and temp.next. The reason we do this line first is kind of self-explanatory because we need to assign it to temp.next before we actually change temp.next. And the last thing we have to do is just advance our current pointer to be uh, now previous.next. Conveniently for us, we did save it up here. Previous.next is equal to current.next. Even though we reassigned current.next, we still saved it here so that we could advance the current pointer. Notice we don't have to advance the previous pointer because uh, since we removed the current node, we, we took the current node and moved it somewhere else, the previous pointer can actually stay the same. So that's kind of one edge case that might not really be clear to you. Uh, so if it's not, I recommend kind of drawing it out. I think that's probably the best way to understand these linked list problems because there's a lot of pointer stuff going on. Uh, that's pretty much the entire code. So once that's done, we can return the head of the linked list, but it might not be the original head of the linked list. It might have changed, but conveniently for us, we have a dummy node. So we can return dummy.next, which will always have the head of the linked list for us. So let's run the code to make sure that it works. Oops, actually one thing I messed up is since we're always going to be inserting after the temp node, we should not assign it to the head. We should assign it to the dummy because it's possible that we might be taking this current node and actually inserting it at the beginning of the linked list, which would be right after the dummy node. So that's my pad. So sorry about that. Let's run it again to make sure that it works this time. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's very efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.